In this episode, we're going back to Des Moines, Iowa. We're gonna go for a stroll along Papa John Sculpture Garden, the Des Moines River, East Village, Lively Court Avenue, and a very special private tour of the state capital, one of the most beautiful in the whole country. We'll eat at a Cuban restaurant and have a great meetup with the local pelican heads. And we'll go for an e-bike ride at Yellow Banks Park. Then, the world's largest truck stop. They even have a trucking museum. All that and more coming up next. I'm riding, 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 riding with my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be. Because I'm free in my RV. Here we are, and for the duration of our stay, we're going to be at Yellow Banks Park in Pleasant Hill, about nine miles from downtown. Seems like a good spot. Well, this is our very nice campsite here at Yellow Banks uh, Park in Des Moines. Now we're gonna go for a quick, you know, drive around town, see what's going on, get the lay of the land. There it is, downtown in the distance. Now, I've been to many cities in my time, but where else can you see a grain elevator with the Capitol building peeking from behind? And there it is, the iconic Capitol building, or State House as it is also called, one of the most remarkable in the nation, in my humble opinion. Built in a modified and refined Renaissance style, I just think it's such a classy and gorgeous building. And wait till you see inside! From this vantage point, you also get some of the best views of downtown. And uh, we're gonna have a meetup here soon, so we're gonna scout the place real quick. And this is it, the Iowa Tap Room. Right, let's check out the Iowa Tap Room here. The Des Moines IPA. Yeah, they have over 99 beers on tap and a pretty good spinach and artichoke dip. I think we've got our bearings, more or less, if you will. Tomorrow afternoon we'll continue exploring. So, see you tomorrow. afternoon and uh, I've never done this before but I'm in Iowa so I'm thinking let's grill some Iowa sweet corn okay if they don't want to stay I'll just rotate them well, I'm about to grill some meats here as you saw and I'm gonna use some of these spices that Brian Wood uh, sent me and these are, this is a Manistee Steak Seasoning from Michigan. That's going to be so good. Yeah, I put some green beans too, I think they're burned. Yeah, veggies aren't really my thing when it comes to grilling. Meat, on the other hand, uh, hmm, one word, smell o vision Let's get to Des Moines. First, we're going to this area called East Village, the general area where the State House is located, and we're gonna take a stroll along the Des Moines River. Well, we made it to downtown Des Moines. We're gonna check this out. And there's the pedestrian bridge. Very cool, a gentrified area here. That, or not gentrified, but like residential. Look at that, it looks like a container home almost. Very cool, you can even see the people inside. It's very cool, and uh, yeah. Let's walk around a little bit. Yeah, very nice. Everything looks brand new. Let's check out Robert D. Ray Asian Gardens here, which are meant to transport you to a picturesque Far Eastern paradise. Look 
the monarch butterfly. And it flew. This is called the character garden. Each granite boulder inscribed with Chinese characters representing responsibility, citizenship, fairness, respect, caring, and trustworthiness. Oh, the Chinese zodiac. That's me. That's Ely. That's downtown. Yeah, they have the Chinese calendar right there. Let's walk across the pedestrian bridge. The Iowa Women of Achievement Bridge. They have a skateboarding park across the river. And check out that view of the State House. We're definitely approaching magic hour here. All right, let's continue. Our next stop is going to be at the World Food Prize Hall of Laureates, but more importantly the building itself which dates back to 1903 and was the Des Moines Public Library until 2006 when it was replaced by a larger, more modern building. While the building itself is closed, the gardens are open to the public. Let's check out the gardens real quick. Very nice place to relax, for sure. All right, let's continue. We're going to drive west a little bit to see if we can pass by Terrace Hill. It is a historic site and it has been the governor's mansion since 1971 and they do offer guided tours but we're not going to do that today. of hard to see from the outside with all this vegetation. Here, this may be our best shot. Okay, I give up. Let's continue. And one of the biggest attractions these days here in Des Moines is the Papa John Sculpture Garden. And I visited ever so briefly when I was here in 2020, but today we're gonna do the whole thing, or most of it at least. It's art, man. And we almost forgot to come to Papa John's Sculpture Park, but here we are, it's magic hour, let's check it out. This one is called The Dancing Figures, version 3. And here's probably one of the most prominent pieces in the whole park. It is called Nomad or Nomade by Spanish sculptor Jaume Plensa. Well, this is perhaps the most famous sculpture here. I'll be the first to admit I'm not a modern art connoisseur or even aficionado for that matter, but I do find this one to be fascinating. And you can walk inside it. Really cool. 
Hmm, that's very interesting. And I'm sorry if sometimes I might tend not to fully appreciate some of these modern art pieces. I know they have their value and their place, and don't get me wrong, some of them are super interesting and captivating. Again, some of these are fascinating. This one is called the Panoramic Awareness Pavilion. I like it mostly for the trippiness factor of it. And I guess that's one of the functions of art, to make you aware of your own senses, or play with them in this case. This one is called Ancient Forest, and it is a process of selecting actual tree branches to make the sculpture and then casting them in bronze, patina applied to make it look like wood after the fact. This one is called Thinker on a Rock. Some of these are actually truly fascinating, and some of them not so much. For example, I've never gotten what's the big deal about the four letters spelling love. I do like the White Ghost by Japanese artist Yoshitomo Nara, but in any case, it's a lovely park. We were thinking of dinner at this Django place, but let's see what else is there. Court Avenue here actually comes very highly recommended, so let's see what there is. Okay, this is pretty nice. I see people walking on the street, so that's a good sign. Yep, this block right here seems pretty lively, so let's find parking and then something to eat. Hmm, a brew pub, and that's not just any brew pub, that's Court Avenue Restaurant and Brewing Company, Des Moines' original brewery founded in 1996 in a building dating back to 1881. Illy is having the jambalaya, and I'm having some pork chops. Well, that was really good. I really enjoyed this place. And let me tell you something. Um, I really like Des Moines. It's a city with a wealthy guy outside. It's got a vibrant downtown right here, even, even on a Monday night. It's like there's people on the streets, it's very nice. We decided to go for a stroll, walk off our dinner before getting back home. All right, let's go back home. But yeah, this Court Avenue happening, even on a Monday night. Let's get some rest because tomorrow, tomorrow is going to be a big day. It's really not the most attractive drive from Yellow Banks to downtown. You have to go through all this industrial area, but there's some demolition and construction going on, so perhaps it will get better. But hey, don't mind that. Today we are visiting the State House, and our friends Steve and Karen have a very special treat for us. He contacted his state legislator representative Carter Nordman, and he's gonna give us a private tour, including some areas that are off-limit to the public. Here's the Soldiers and Sailors Monument. And we're gonna begin our tour with the Pièce de Résistance, the cupola, which, as I mentioned, is an area normally not open to the public. Not quite Angel's Landing, but it is quite a hike. I guess we're going to the Whispering Gallery. The Whispering Gallery is this catwalk up here where the acoustics are quite astonishing. Yeah, apparently the trick is if we stand behind one of this, and he's gonna speak all the way on the other side. You can hear him as if they were right here. Very easy. Yeah, be careful in these stairs, they are like very steep, but... And slippery. We're going all the way to the top. Uh, there's a unique view you don't see every day, right there. All right, up and up we go. Oh. 
So this is a, a metallic internal dome. It is working, yeah. Hmm. That's quite a view down there. And here we are at the very top of the cupola. Well, not quite. That partly cloudy sky painted ceiling is yet another metallic false dome. One final push up the spiral staircase, and we're there. You know, one thing is for sure, it's gonna be easier on the way down. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh. Here we are. Now, what do you all think? This is, has to be like the, the, the best, this has got to be the best view of downtown Des Moines ever from, well, it was probably at one point the highest point in the city until they built all those. Until they built that one right there that yeah. looks like it's got a point in it. Yeah, that one right there. It's a commanding view, if I, if I say so myself. To this side, we have the, some of the other monuments. We're gonna go down there now and see everything, but let me tell you, uh, I want to thank uh, a representative, Carter the Nordman, for, for this opportunity. And look at that. That's gold leaf, 24, 23 and a half carats. I forget exactly, but it's, it's real gold. And uh, that's amazing. You want to say something to, to our, our 200,000 viewers? Or? <laughs> well, I'd say welcome to the Iowa State Capitol. I think it's one thank of the most you. beautiful in the nation. I, I, I tend to agree, yes. I have the, uh, the privilege of showing it off. I'm very proud to show it off, so. Thank but, you, uh, thank yeah. you, brother, and I, and I appreciate this opportunity to, to come up here. Absolutely, we, yeah. we're glad you're in Iowa. That's the top dome, down. there's a second dome here. And uh, yeah, that's a unique look from behind with all the electrical um, connections. So yeah, if you're prone to vertigo or claustrophobia, do not do this. Going to the house, the chamber, the house. Now we are in the house of representatives. This one, that representative um, just passed away. Oh. So it's um, John Landon, and I guess he's been, he was in Pope County, which is to, uh, this county. Well, here I am. I was gonna, you know, do the gavel thing, but there's no gavel. They hid it for me, so. This is really cool. This is a part of the building that got completely destroyed in a fire back in 1904 during the electrification of the building. And that's where our host, Representative Carter Nordman, sits when the house is in session. Okay, 
let's continue. Next up, the State Law Library of Iowa, probably the most beautiful room in the whole building. It has 105,000 law and legal history books. My favorite, actually, are the spiral staircases. A mural called Westward depicts the migration of early pioneers through Iowa. It's a beautiful building, inside and outside. That's awesome. Okay, in a minute, we're going to go up the grand staircase, and the stairs are made out of granite. Here's a model of the USS Iowa battleship of World War II fame. And finally, the historic courthouse. We were also able to visit the governor's office as part of our private tour, but I was discouraged from taking videos, so we only have some pictures. The governor, by the way, does have an outstanding view of the city out her window. Again, I want to thank Steve for making this happen. We were also able to see the state constitution right next to the secretary of state's office, who also has a great view. And finally, the vault, where all the records are kept. What a wonderful tour that was. And we forgot to walk around the grounds. Hmm. Another time, perhaps. We've worked an appetite. And did you know there's a Cuban restaurant in Des Moines? It is called Ceviche Bar, and that's where we're going to have lunch. Today's special is the paella and mojitos. Great Cuban sandwiches too, by the way. Later in the day, we had a great meetup at the Iowa Tap Room. From Sully Green, Illinois, 312 miles, is that what it is? 300, the farthest one, the farthest one to come. And Jeff, who's representing, because he has the fly, fly, fly <laughs> t-shirt. Well, that was a very successful meetup. Thank you, everybody who came. And uh, with that, we say goodbye to Des Moines, Iowa, on the road again tomorrow morning. Let's go for an e bike ride at Yellow Banks Park. We haven't really done anything in this park since we arrived, and for the first time, I'm gonna get a chance to test the e-bike on some hilly terrain. There's a lake here. And what is it with dogs and bikes? They just love bikes, you know, for some reason. <laughs> hey! Okay, I'm out of here. <laughs>
here we are on the banks of the Des Moines River. Are these the yellow banks the park is named after? Oh, is that an eagle? Certainly looks like one. Let's put these fat tires to the test. Oh well, I don't think we have enough torque to break the inertia in this sandy terrain. Alright, let's get out of here because today is moving day! It is a hot one today here in Iowa. I'm out of water, so we're gonna fill up with water. We're gonna dump the, the holding tanks. And then uh, I wanna go to that famous, um, it's, a, it's a famous truck stop. It's the largest truck stop, truck stop in the world. So let's fill up with water and uh, then we'll do the, the, the great dump. Here we are, Iowa 80. We're gonna fill up and they do allow overnight parking for RVs, so this might be where we're gonna call it. I just won't be able to open up the slide, which could be a minor inconvenience. Yeah, we've made it to the world's largest truck stop. I'm gonna take a picture with that sign right there. And uh, well, check it out, they have two old uh, gas bombs here in the front. Very cool.
this thing. It keeps going on and on, but what I'm really looking for is something to eat. I'm famished, so a burger with tater tots should do it. It is very much a tourist attraction, but it is also an honest-to-God truck stop with all the amenities. And they have all kinds of tools and accessories at what is believed to be the largest drug store in the country. They even have a dentist and a chiropractic clinic. everything I hoped it would be. Very cool. Now let's see if we can go into the trucking museum and then I'm gonna ponder the idea whether I want to spend the night here or, or keep on going. Right, I left the AC on there and let's see how much it consumes in one hour. And now let's go into the Iowa I-80 trucking museum. There it is. There are some rather rare specimens here by the entrance and all these vintage gas pumps. Oh, that one kind of looks like that gas station on Route 66. And this one here just turned 100 years old, a 1921 International Harvester Model 101. nineteen eleven Walker Electric Model forty three. So one hundred years before the first Tesla Roadster rolled off the assembly line, these were already rolling down the street. Much slower though and with a fifty mile range. We could spend hours here and we're gonna try and see as much as possible. I find car museums fascinating. And I really like the fact that each truck has a sign with some of the specs and a bit of history. Apparently, it can take up to two years and a lot of money to restore these trucks. Some of them look impeccable, like this 1912 Sorrer. Here's another rather unique specimen. This is one of only 13 stainless steel auto cars built for the Edgecom Steel Company. This particular Mercedes model is still in production. Here's a rare Ford F-250 Camper Special, specifically designed to carry a truck camper. The extended mirrors, an optional generator and camper wiring harness were just a few camper-oriented features. Part of me would prefer to see all this in a more chronological order because it can be overwhelming. When you first walk in, you don't realize how massive this place really is. This one is pretty unique too, I have never seen anything quite like it. And this one is just a beauty, Hank Goods Highway Hilton. It has traveled over one and a half million miles.
just keeps going and going. That was fascinating, truly fascinating. Now, let's go back to the RV. Right here at the I Iowa 80, largest truck stop in the world. Yeah, I've decided. I think uh, I'm gonna spend the night here. But yeah, tomorrow we're gonna have like an all day drive, but you'll We'll get there when we get there. Well, I've been running the AC. Let's see how the battery is doing. Okay, I've had the AC for about an hour. And of course, at the beginning, it takes a little longer to cool down. It's at 75 degrees. I don't want to tax it too much. And right now, I'm down to 79%. Um, it's just time remaining 18 hours, but you know the, the compressor is not on now. So if it went down to 79% in one hour, I imagine that I have about what four hours left so uh, you know I'll play by ear now that it is kind of hot in the afternoon I'll keep it on and if the battery uh, whenever the battery goes below like 40% then I'll, I'll turn it off and, and and use the battery for for what I really needed today which is getting some work done it's also the first night that I'm gonna sleep with the slide in, so uh, we'll figure out if we can get to everything in the in the refrigerator and all that. So it's a good test. And yeah, tomorrow is gonna be an all-day drive, but we'll get there when we get there. Well, yeah, working with a view of the sunset doesn't get much better than this. See you tomorrow. We're crossing back into Illinois and Indiana and eventually Ohio. We're gonna visit Cleveland, but more about that on the next episode. Until then, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road. I'm free in my RV. Yeah, I'm riding, riding, riding. I'm riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be. Cause I'm free in my RV. Yeah.